effective politician you've ever met? The, the, the interesting ones are what interest me, not the impressive ones. Because impressive depends on all sorts of things. But the, the ones that are interesting are the ones who are prepared to answer a bit of your question, you know, and listen to what you say and sort of make an effort. And the most difficult are, the, the higher they get, the grander they get, the more difficult they are to, to interview. Because the grander they get, the more it matters whether they get the words exactly right and all that. So interviewing a prime minister or interviewing a president of the United States or prime minister of India or something, they're the tough ones to do. And you have to do lots and lots and lots of work beforehand so you know exactly what... Actually, one of the funny things about interviewing is you want to know what the people you're interviewing are going to say. You want to have a good idea what they may say. The great mistake is if they ever catch you by surprise by saying something. And if they do surprise you, you've got to know, this sounds silly, I know, but you've got to know it's surprising. So when they give you an answer that is unexpected, you've got to go, ah, you've never said that before. And then they say, boop, boop. <laughs> what have you got there? Um, uh, do you think, like, young sh people should, like, care about politics as much as adults do? Yeah, I think they do, actually, too. Um, we do this, do you know about the school's question time we do? No. In July, we do, a, we have a competition, o older than you, but we do a competition, and we select about eight or twelve people from all over the country who come and actually run the program. But behind that, they put on a question time in their schools um, but in, order to, in order to win. And they are very interested. I don't think there's anything about... I, I mean, all the young people I know, and I've got young children, they're all fascinated by politics. What are your highlights of being on the show? On this one? <coughs> well, the best thing that happens is when I don't have to do anything, either because two members of the panel are having a big battle, or because, best of all, two members of the audience are. Those are my highlights. But the, the sort of, you know, and you, we, we once had two people sitting sort of in the middle there, side by side, and they started having a blazing row. And it, we all just sat back, and, oh, that's nice, I've gone for a bit, and the cameras were just on it. <laughs> that was fun. Otherwise, the big events are good. Um, when there's a, an election, we usually have the party leaders and they last time we had all three party leaders um, in a very very hot studio and it was a live broadcast and live broadcasts are quite different from recorded ones because if anything goes wrong there's nothing you can do about it, it just goes out on the air so we had uh, Liberal Democrats first then Tories then Labour and the audience was the same so the audience got really going you know the poor man who came last was Tony Blair walked into this place and it was baking hot and everybody was dripping sweat and he was soon dripping sweat and then the questions came and sort of battered him. That was, that was enjoyable. <laughs> you know, because we're going to be filming next week, yes. have you got any good tips for us? Are you going to be talking to camera next yeah, week? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yes, I'll give you one tip, um, uh, which I'm sure you know anyway, which is um, when you talk to the camera, if you're a bit nervous about it, and if it seems a bit off-putting having a camera there, just think of you're talking to a friend, one person. Because the thing about television is, they, I mean, uh, this program tonight is seen by two and a half million people, but you never actually think it's two and a half million. If you did, you'd go crazy. It'd be like Hitler addressing a huge rally of people. But you just talk to a camera and you just see one person there. And that, will, that changes the way you talk. It may, makes you relax, it makes you talk informally instead of being very sort of stiff and nervy. So you think of a friend or your mum or something. Actually, probably not your mum. <laughs> a friend. You got one. Um, you know, because um, when we do the news reporting, yeah. um, I'm going to be a presenter, so have you got oh, like, you? some tips for presenting? Yes. Um, news presenting. Yeah. Well, I, I did do the news when I started, and I, I wasn't very good at it because I can never pronounce names. I always get the pronunciation wrong. So the first thing is check the names. Yeah. And then, um, I think actually try not to be too, don't try and act too much. Just tell it quite simply, tell your stories quite simply. The first news bulletin I ever did, it was in, I was in Bristol working for BBC. 
and I was doing this news bulletin and it was about something quite sad. It was, it was I know, the mayor, and this is quite, you try saying this, the mayor of Western Supermare, <laughs> right? He just died, okay? The mayor of Western Supermare, say that. The mayor of Western Supermare. You see, you get the giggles anyway. And then he's dead, <laughs> so you have to be serious. Anyway, as I got to it, the left-hand leg of the chair I was on broke. <laughs> so, so I was, I, I was falling over and I had to hold on to the desk like this and I was reading, saying this thing and then I realised that I had to turn the page of the script because we didn't have autocue but if I let go of the table to turn the page of the script I'd disappear from sight so I had to kind of grasp so you have to put up with anything that's the thing about news reading anything can go wrong and I'll tell you another thing actually about television which, is, which I like very much about it which is if things do go wrong everybody uh, in the gallery, all you know, the people running it panic and get upset about it and everything else. The only people who never mind are the audience. So if things, I mean, I always enjoy it when things go wrong <laughs> because you can make a joke of it, you know. And I had, I've, I've had things over the years where everything goes completely wrong. And as long as you enjoy it and, and show that it's, and don't look terribly embarrassed and sort of go red and say, what all going to do now? But just make a joke of it, it's fine. Politics affect our future the way that politics is going today. It certainly will, yeah, um, in every way and everywhere. Whether it's Russian politics, American politics, the American elections will affect you. Everything will affect you. Not just British politics. In fact, British politics probably, of, of compared with American or European, are probably less important now. Well, because there's less power there. What Russia does, what America does, what China does, all these things are going to have a huge effect on the way you live your, the next, what, 80 years of life. Huge effect. You're all very good with your questions. <laughs> Nobody's been tongue-tied. <laughs> Who hasn't had one? You haven't had one. When you were younger, was you interested in politics? No. <laughs> I wasn't, actually. I didn't really come to do straight domestic politics for quite a long time. And I did it then because it was, the, it was the sort of most exciting place to be. And also there was a lot of work, because you get regular work if you do politics. You know, you do, I was doing some nightly programs, rather like Newsnight, we did one on BBC One. So, no, I haven't always been. Are you? I'm not sure. Not sure. I don't think, it's, I don't think you need to be, to be a good reporter, a journalist. I mean, reporting is just looking at the world and explaining what's going on and talking about it. And it's the best thing there is, I think. The great thing about it is it allows you to be really nosy, like you're being. <laughs> you, can, you, know, you can ask anybody anything if you're a, if you're a reporter. And whenever, wherever you go in the world, you can, you can find a way of going to see things other people can't, talking to people other people can't. It's, it's terrific. Um, did you always want to be a presenter when you were younger? Mm, no, not really. But I had a funny background because my father was in television as a broadcaster. And so I grew up with it. And I, I did my first real program on radio, which was a, a, a music a record request thing when I was 11. And I did my first television when I was 11. Terrifying thought. So I sort of didn't particularly want to do it. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I did it. And then by the time I had to decide what to do, it seemed to be the only thing I could do. Because I'd sort of got used to microphones and cameras. And um, I sort of slid into it. I might not be allowed to ask you, but I'll just try and look anyway. Yes? Gordon Brown, what do you think of him? <laughs> um... I, well, the first thing is I don't actually know him very well because I've never interviewed him, funnily, because he, he's very shy of coming on television. Um, and I think he has obvious problems of communication, uh, which I've no idea whether he'll get, get, you know, conquer them. But compared with Tony Blair, who was bouncing like Tigger, wasn't he always? Sort of, you know, jolly and hello, hello, how are you, how are you, how are you? <laughs> Gordon Brown sort of comes in. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so I think he's got some problems of presentation. I wouldn't talk about his policy, but just in terms of how he comes across. Um, I, I, it's, it's a bit early to say. It's a big difference being, 
I think the thing that he didn't realise was the leap from being Chancellor of the Exchequer when you do just sit. I mean, you know, he's a complete non-stop worker, just sits all night reading and doing his sums and everything. And, um, and if you're running the economy, that's all you have to do. And you just, people come in and say, can we have some more money for the National Health Service? They say, no. Can we have some money for education? No. You know, and then I'm going to put up taxes, right? Put up taxes. And you'll just control everything. But you, never very, you don't very much have to go out in public. If you're Prime Minister, suddenly you're in the, absolutely in the glare uh, of the lights. And you have to have ready answers. You have to have a sense of humour. Slightly underdeveloped in his case in public. <laughs> Though in private he can be quite amusing. Um, you have to be very quick-witted. You, you can't be ponderous. Um, so it's quite, a, it's quite a tricky, it's quite a tricky transition. Does that, does that answer your question? Yes.